Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today, it's a showdown between Steel Luxury Dual Times, Patek Philippe Aquanaut Travel Time versus Vacheron Constantin Overseas Dual Time. Let the games begin. We know the Patek Philippe well, the Aquanaut having launched back in 2011 in the form you see here, technically the 5164A-001. On paper, it's quite similar to the Vacheron in size, but in fact, it feels and looks nothing like the VC. On my 16 centimeters circumference wrist, and I'll zoom out a little bit to give you a better sense and scale, the watch fits easily, and the fact that it is fit standard with a strap means it also looks entirely distinct from the Vacheron. Now remember, the Vacheron comes with an accessory rubber strap, so this is apples to apples. You'll also note that this is a thin watch, technically 40.8 millimeters to the Vacheron's 41. The lack of an integrated lug and bracelet structure means the watch appears far smaller and more compact. It is objectively much thinner, 10.3 millimeters thick to the Vacheron's 13.1. Across the wrist, 46.8 millimeters lug to lug with a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Now you got to remember the Vacheron with a proprietary junction doesn't have an equivalent measurement between the lugs, but across the wrist, the VC is about 56.7 when you include the flare of the bracelet. So the real world size distinction between the two is pronounced. Now the watch is wieldy, comfortable, and paired with a cuttable rubber strap. Patek likes to call this composite. I'm not sure I'm going to play along. It's distinctly rubber, and I have no reason to believe it's any more or less durable than conventional vulcanized rubber, but it is nicely keyed to match the geosphere etching of the dial, and on the underside you can see there are hollows to vent the wrist, as well as many individual cut points where you can size this strap. There's a double deployment clasp, and you can see the chassis itself doubles as the spring system for the twin trigger release. The strap is cuttable, and cuttable extensively on both sides, so you are going to get a very precise fit. It integrates with the end of the lugs and the case band, so there's a highly coherent all of a piece look, although the contrast between the rubber and the metal is deliberate and in my opinion well chosen. It adds a little bit of distinction vis-a-vis -vis the Vacheron, at least on the bracelet. Now you'll note the case of the Aquanaut is not nearly as complex in its construction as the case of the Nautilus, but the 5164 travel time returns some complexity to the picture with the seamless integration of the travel time pushers into the wing structure on the nine o'clock side of the watch. So it winds up being just as well balanced as a standard 5167 with the complexity and attention to detail you'd expect in the Nautilus. So this timepiece featuring a combination of satin and polish externally is blessed with a gradient style dial internally white gold, Arabic numerals, white gold hands, and you can see the geosphere cut that was present on the strap, recapped on the dial. It's a silver at center, and it's a sort of dark gray or anthracite at its outer circumference. This watch will win the loom shot, so spoiler alert, this one has the better loom shot, but I'm going to show you both. Now, there is a mini geosphere inside the radial date at 6 o'clock. Underneath the case back, a descendant of Patek Philippe movements past. This is the 324. The basic architecture has been in service for well over 20 years. Caliber 324 SCFUS. It's the center second travel time. It does feature six position adjustment and with the Patek Philippe seal attestation that it will run no worse than minus three plus two seconds a day. Silicon hairspring, gyro max, free sprung balance, beaten away at four hertz, 35 to 45 hour power reserve, unidirectional winding with ceramic rotor bearings. All of this 120 meters water resistant, even with the triggers on the nine o'clock side and the watch with a screw down crown to match. If you're wondering what does the pusher adjuster do? Well, it adjusts the date. Now, the Vacheron. The new kid in town. Although the third generation overseas launched in 2016, we waited until 2018 to see the dual time variant. The dual time has been in the lineup in one form or another since the second generation watch, and this model is a little bit smaller than some of the other overseas complications, such as the tourbillon on the chronograph now, giving ourselves a bit less light so we can see the contrasts better. You'll note that on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, the watch has a lot more presence than the Patek. Part of this is due to the shape and geometry of the case. Part of this is due to the presence of the bracelet. The bracelet is the premium fitment, so the watch has two straps and a bracelet. I chose to show it on the bracelet. The timepiece is thicker, 13.1 millimeters, and lug to lug, just including the lugs, 49 millimeters across the wrist. When I quoted that gargantuan 56.7 millimeter span, I was talking about this, the rigid flare of the bracelet. Unlike the second generation watch, you can't pull the bracelet straight down from the lugs, so there's a little bit of virtual size baked in. 
That said, the bracelet is beautifully finished, and even if I were to throw the Aquanaut on a bracelet, it would not be as beautifully executed as this one, nor would it feature full size ability with every individual link on both sides fixed by a screw. Plenty of gaps on the underside to vent the wrist. This will actually do a bit better than the strap on the Aquanaut. The clasp on the Vacheron is not as handsome as that on the Patek, but it is sturdier. As the swing arms are a bit thicker, there's more material here. Underneath the case back, you have a Vacheron manufacturer caliber for the first time in an overseas dual time. It used to be a Jajera Le Coupe base. And here's one of the features of the overseas that you will not find on the Patek, a quick release system for the lugs. That's how you can easily and without a tool fit those accessory straps. The movement 5110, DT for dual time, 60 hour power reserve, Geneva Hallmark, nicely executed, adjusted in a chronometer style, five positions, still one less than the Patek, I should note, but a beautiful engraved compass rose, 22 karat gold winding mass, no expense spared right there. You'll also note that the movement is of a modern generation, properly sized for the case back. The watch 150 meters water resistant, and it has a paramagnetic ring around the movement to help it achieve similar anti-magnetism to previous overseas models that had a full enclosure made of iron. So let's talk about the advantages of these watches, starting with the Patek Philippe. Okay, the Patek, first and foremost, needs to be discussed as a better balanced dial. It's simply more coherent, it's more attractive. The overseas, well, it's a bit more scattered. As you can see, there are off-center details, there are asymmetrical elements that don't seem as well calculated. They clutter the dial rather than enlivening it. At their best, complications should complement the fundamental dial architecture. Here, especially at nine o'clock, I feel almost as though the complications are placed in a scatter shot and somewhat random manner. Patek Philippe with its system does better. You have a reference time, so you have that hour where you are not with the skeleton hand, and then you can see at both 8.30 and 3.30, there are little windows that act as your AM, PM indicator for your home and local time. This is just a better integration, fully balanced. You can cut it down the middle and it's completely symmetrical. You also have the ability to hide that secondary hour hand when you don't want it. You can superimpose the local over the reference, whereas with the Vacheron, there's no making that reference GMT hand go away. It's not going to hide underneath the local hour. Let's also talk about the slimmer and more elegant case of the Aquanaut, as it is far thinner. It's probably best to put these two, and I'm going to pull the Vacheron apart right here just so I can use it for example, but if you note just how much thicker the Vacheron is, it's not even close. With the Vacheron, a bit of a hamburger compound complication compared to the elegant integration of the Patek Philippe. So the Patek Philippe simply slimmer, more likely to duck under a cuff, though neither of these watches will be challenged in that regard. But if you want the watch that wears better with formal attire, this might be the one simply due to its slim profile and balance. I'll also mention that there is no date pusher. So from an aesthetic standpoint, there's no appendage to mar the case. Now, functionally, it's at a disadvantage because of course the Vacheron with a date pusher stuck onto the side of the case, like a warthog, it is easy to use, but it is also aesthetically a bit of an imbalance. I would say that's a strike against the watch visually. The Patek Philippe, you're gonna need a pusher, a tool adjuster, or a broken toothpick, but you don't see it in profile. Also important, there is the prestige, both of the model and of the brand. Patek Philippe is red hot right now. Vacheron is recovering rapidly and has tremendous potential and a glorious history, but at the moment, from a pure prestige and status standpoint, and that's important for a lot of folks who buy luxury watches, this watch is leading by a mile, and so is the Patek Philippe brand name. If you want an investment vehicle, at least for now, while things are crazy in the steel Patek sports watch market, you're gonna buy this watch new for 34,020 US dollars, and you could potentially sell it for 43 to 44,000 pre-owned. This for a watch that bowed back in 2011. It has never been hotter than it is right now. Superior loom. I'm going to show you the loom shots of these watches and spoiler alert, this one's just a little bit more effective. Also, I'm going to say that there is superior integration of the travel time complication. You don't see any kind of untoward dial details, nor do the pusher adjusters, which require no screw out of the crown and, and no fumbling with the crown inside its shear guards, but you can simply actuate what you need. Externally, these secondary controls don't mar the case, and the dial is beautifully balanced to the point that you wouldn't even know it's a dual time if you cover up that reference hour hand with the local. So from a complication standpoint, this is a very elegant solution. Now, the Vacheron. Okay, as you can see, the Vacheron 
offers unrivaled pre-owned value. You get three straps, a, well one is a bracelet, a full steel bracelet. You get two straps and a deployant clasp with them. All of this for a watch that sells new for $24,700. Pre-owned, it's going to sell for eighteen dollars to $20,000, which is to say this watch that you see right here is a smoking deal compared to what Patek Philippe's offering for thirty four dollars Especially if you buy this pre-owned, you can get it for almost half the cost of the Patek new. And that's saying something considering the degree of equipment. Now let me show you how easy it is to simply put the bracelet right back on. So not only do you get an extraordinary bracelet, two quality straps, one in leather, one in rubber, and an extra deployment for the straps, but you get quick release lugs that can easily fit and remove simply by using your thumbnail. You'll also appreciate the fact that the bracelet on this watch is fully sizable. And I should mention the rubber strap that comes with this watch does not need to be cut down to size. It has conventional pin apertures so you can size it and retain all of the original material. So on that count, advantage Vacheron. I'm also going to mention that this watch features a properly sized caliber. There's no need for case back gymnastics to excuse the undersized movement. The Patek needs that. The Vacheron with the 5110 does not. 60 hour power reserve versus potentially as little as 35 and an average of 40 with the Patek Philippe. So from a technical standpoint, this watch has a longer power reserve and a properly sized movement. Also important to note that rubber strap, you don't have to cut it down. I can't overemphasize what a pain in the butt that can be because if you cut wrong, you buy new. Here's the other thing. This is a watch that features dial quality that at least according to my perception is superior to that of the Patek. The individual features, the contrast, the depth of the ray hot, the frosted finish of the AM PM as well as the radial date, the contrast of the hour indices in the hands, the flourishes of red, the luster of the sunburst. It just appears more expensive and more robustly executed from a pure luxury standpoint. You feel that the details here were sweated in terms of material and finish whereas Patek has superior design and balance, but the materials and the presentation aren't quite as impressive at close range, especially under the loop. So on that basis, advantage Vacheron Constantin. Finally, this will be my choice. Of the two watches, this is the one I want more. Though a bit larger, it's not oversized or ungainly in any way, and 13.1 millimeters still fits easily underneath the cuff. I like that Vacheron sweated the details and updated its overseas. The overseas has been updated two times since the 2007 current generation of the Aquanaut, and we've seen two overseas since the arrival of the 5164 in 2011. So Vacheron investing immensely in its luxury sports watch. Everything from the movement to the bracelet to the quick release lug system simply appeals to me more, and I also like to root for an underdog. The quality of the dial is undeniable, and the small refinements hint at a watch more fully realized or more extensively planned, perhaps, than the Patek Philippe, which only ever looked right on a strap and then can't compare to the richness of the Vacheron on its bracelet. So it's a bit of an unfair advantage to the Vacheron simply because the product is probably two generations ahead of the Patek, which speaks to a little bit of complacency on the other side of Geneva in Plan Les Watt. So between the two, there's no doubt that the Patek has elegance, but the Vacheron simply has more appeal, as, at least as I see it. You guys let me know which of these two would you pick for your own wrist. Loom shot to come. Patek Philippe, Vacheron. Patek Philippe, Vacheron.